Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Jim Bostic. I am the Executive Director of Nepahan Community Center here in the city of Yonkers, and I have gathered with these awesome uh, community partners uh, this afternoon to announce a new initiative that has come into the city of Yonkers called the Gateway to a Healthy Yonkers. It is a, a program that has been funded by the New York State Department of Health and Division of Chronic Illness um, to attack what has become a problem among particularly our young people, um, that is the problem of obesity. And we have been given a five-year grant working with several of our community partners to address this matter on several different fronts. We will be focusing on both the community itself and on the, our public school system. Our community partners are, of course, um, our state uh, delegation, uh, Senator Andrea Stewart-Cousins and uh, Shelley Mayer, our assemblywoman, who has been a major force in Albany for helping us to secure funding on a state level. Um, our mayor and the city of Yonkers, Mike Spano, who has been a partner in this endeavor since we began uh, this initiative. And of course, our school district under the direction of Dr. Mike Yazzurlo, um has been um, a major part of this initiative uh, from the planning stages. We also have as partners the New York State After School Network and a Healthy Yonkers Initiative. And we've all come together to again address this issue of obesity. Uh, our program uh, director for this initiative is Cheryl Brandon, who is the CEO of Sister to Sister International and also of Brandon Solutions, who will come under the aegis of the Yonkers YMCA, who has partnered with us as well under the aegis of uh, Mrs. Sean Howard, uh, to address this issue. We are going to focus in on our eating habits here in the city of Yonkers in our public school systems, <clears throat> what we are providing for our students, um, including additional um, physical activities in the daily school day, and we're going to be looking at policies and environmental systems as they affect the entire city of Yonkers um, on a global scale. We are, intend to um, affect changes and how our grocers do business and our supermarkets do business, um, making sure that they have uh, healthy foods, uh, which our, 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 our community residents can go in and shop and use on a daily basis. In our school system, uh, working with our fifth ed teachers and our teachers, we're going to provide first training to them to include uh, physical activities and, and recess time and in times when they would otherwise be using their iPhones and their iPads, um, we're going to now incorporate some physical activity. So we're very excited about this initiative and to help us talk a little bit more about it, the Chief Officer of the City of Yonkers, our Mayor, Mr. Mike Spano. Let me just start off by saying thank you uh, to uh, Dr. Bosick and, and and for all who are joining us here today for this really uh, important and, of course, exciting announcement. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to recognize the people uh, that are with us here today and also are very much a part of what's happening uh, and who made this initiative possible. The uh, Yonkers City Council and our leader, Mike Sabatino, is with us. Uh, the uh, We also have... Uh, of course, we have members of the, of the Board of Education, uh, especially Doc, uh, Dr. Uh, Mike Uzzolo, Dr. Casada, and Christine Montero, who are with us today. Uh, you, of course, you heard from Jim Bostic, my good uh, speak earlier. Uh, we have Sean Patterson Howard from the Yonkers uh, YMCA. Uh, we're a special thanks, even though he's not here, but he's ever present. We all know is our governor, Andrew Cuomo, uh, and the New York Department of Health. Uh, the Senate Democratic leader of the New York State Senate, our Senator, Andrea Stewart-Cousins, uh, uh, Senator Latimer, who's not with us today, but uh, uh, we have uh, Assemblywoman Shelley Mayer, and of course, Gary Pretlow is with us here in spirit as well. Uh, Linda Bohan was the Hispanic Advisory Board. Uh, Cheryl Brennan, we've talked about before. Kelly Chiarella, who is uh, the head of the Office of the Aging. Uh, all the partners. Today, we're here to announce that Yonkers uh, has received $1.25 million grant from the State Department of Health to help tackle the issues of health and physical needs 
uh, in our schools and in our neighborhoods. It's important to know that we need to be not just in the schools, but we need to be in the neighborhoods as well. And the new initiative, which is called Gateway to a Healthy Yonkers, aims to combat the effects of poverty on children's health. Uh, we know that kids, um, especially kids uh, who are coming from families where the dollars are, are tough to come by, are less likely to have access to healthy food, uh, to have healthy food options, and more likely to develop long-term health issues. Uh, in fact, according to the American Academy of uh, Pediatrics, children who live in poverty are more likely to develop chronic diseases, including uh, asthma and diabetes. Uh, they have, uh, uh, you know, they, they end up with poor nutrition, uh, obviously increased obesity rates and less access to good quality health care. Uh, and that shouldn't be. So today, a new coalition led by Dr. Bostic and the Nepahan Community Center and Sean Patterson Howard and the YMCA are going to, uh, are going with a private public partnership to help prevent obesity to increase access to healthy food options and promote uh, good physical fitness. We're going to look at everything from the food that's available in our schools to the marketing of food right in our own neighborhood, uh, especially the marketing to young people. Uh, we're also going to work with our community to increase the healthy food options that are available uh, in, in the grocery stores and the markets. And of course, we're gonna study uh, a complete street model uh, uh, to promote uh, walking, biking, and exercise in our city. As a matter of fact, we'll be doing uh, one of those uh, on Palmer Road actually pretty soon. So we're excited about that new announcement. That's money was in the budget uh, a while ago. Uh, we also have been working on trying to get a bike path on Riverdale Avenue. And we we're working with our state partners to see if that can be made available. We can do that. It's a hilly city, yes. but we know we can do it. And, and uh, if you can drive a bike around Yonkers, you, you know you're gonna be in excellent health. So um, I, again, I wanna, I wanna say thank you to all of you. Uh, this is a, a lot of hard work, but you know, uh, it's worth it. It's about our city. It's about uh, taking care of our young people. And we know that when we do that, uh, the future's bright. So it's good to see everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mayor Spano. Our next speaker will be the Honorable Andrea Stewart Cousin, who has been a stalwart in Albany in terms of helping us to secure the funds for this and all and many other initiatives. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Bostic. And I just want to congratulate you and certainly Sean uh, and all of the partners for putting in a winning grant. You know, I mean, these things are competitive, so you have to be able to show uh, what's at stake and how we can come together collaboratively and make the changes that are necessary. And so, you know, getting this kind of money uh, to do it right here in Yonkers is very, very impressive and very important. So I congratulate all of you. I know that, that I'm sure Assembly Woman Mayor will say, and, and as the mayor said, you know, we all work very well together uh, in government trying to make sure the resources, you know, get here. Sometimes it looks like the focus is only on one thing, but there's a lot of things that are going on. And as we focus, as we do, on education with, with the help of, of Dr. Uzarlo and his staff and, and, you know, everyone in the school district, we also understand some fundamental realities. If you're hungry, you really can't uh, concentrate. If you don't know when your next meal is, the food insecurity impacts your, ab your ability to learn. And so we know that if we want to make sure we have great outcomes in education and opportunities for employment and, and all of those things, we have to start with the core values of making sure that people have those fundamental things and food security, healthy foods are really very, very basic. So to have a sustained effort, so it's five years, so it's just not, you know, go in one moment and run out, it's a five years so that you start teaching children, their, their parents and, and other people, 
who are, are in charge of, of making sure they have the right things, how to do it. I remember when I was, my mom was prescribed, for example, cigarettes uh, when she was a teenager to open up her nasal passages. And everyone smoked when I was growing up. Now people understand uh, you know, what, how, how damaging it is to, to smoke. And you can see little by little, if we keep it up, the, the habits and the patterns are changing. And it's the same thing with food. There are lots of food options. And you know, everybody eats, if, you know, hopefully, every day. So what are we choosing as that building block for, for the things that we know are going to benefit the community? So this group of people uh, are going to make sure that we put some things in place that will be real standards for generations to come. And I'm sure that you will do it so well that it will be a model for the state and hopefully a national model so that it's, a, you know, it is understood that you would have healthy food and access to healthy food. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Cousin. I just want to mention before we bring up our next speaker that we also have with us here uh, three of our directors of the actual Gateway Academies who are on the ground and implementing many of these programs on a daily basis, Marisol Figueroa, uh, Melanie Spencer and Veronica Thompson. Our next speaker will, is also a dynamic, um, one of our most dynamic elected officials in Albany, and she has already done a, a yeoman's job of bringing in funds into our after school programs in this district, and she continues to be a strong supporter of ours, Assemblywoman Shelley Mayer. <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Bostic, and I want to echo my colleague, uh, Senator Stuart Cousins' comments. Congratulations to all of you for working together. Always one of the most challenging things in every community, but certainly challenging here, with a goal that we all agree is absolutely essential. And I just want to mention one thing. In addition to the food issues that the Senator so eloquently discussed, the issues of fitness and uh, addressing childhood obesity are central to our success as a city and as a school district. Anyone who has spent time in a pediatric emergency room dealing with young children, particularly poor young children who suffer from asthma, know that it detracts from their ability to succeed in school, to succeed in life. And we can do better. This is a disease that we can do better at controlling with exercise, food choices, fitness, and weight. These are really, you know, they seem simple, they're complex in the world we're in, I want to credit this initiative for addressing these critical things that will lead to success for these children and therefore for our city. So congratulations to all of you and I know you have the support of both myself and all of our legislative colleagues to continue to fight for money for very worthwhile initiatives like this one. Thank you. Thank you, Assemblywoman uh, Mayor. Our next speaker, um, leads uh, the largest school district in Westchester County, and it is not an easy task, and he has done so with brilliance and with excellence, Dr. Michael Yazoo. Thank you, Dr. Dr. Bostic. Um, I am very happy and proud to say that the Yonkers Public Schools supports and encourages the efforts of this grant. Uh, we've met already, we've already agreed to have um, a liaison from the committee to work directly with our schools because it's well known that a child needs to have a nutritional quality breakfast in order to do well in school. And we're going to have to teach parents that Fruit Loops and chocolate milk is not a nutritional breakfast. It's high in caloric, in uh, caloric numbers, but it has little or no nutritional value. And sending your child off to school with Fruit Loops and a chocolate milk is almost going to guarantee they're not going to do well. They're not going to be able to focus and concentrate on their work. So I applaud the efforts of the grant, and uh, hopefully we'll see it result in high achievement for our students. They deserve it. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Uzzilla. We feel very confident that our working relationship is with this Yonkers Public School is going to be a great one and, and many changes will be implemented. And one of the things 
And one of the reasons why we feel so confident is because of the person that has been selected to head up um, our, this component of our program, and that is a longtime former principal of the Yonkers Public Schools, Carol Blakeney. So we're excited to have her on our team and back um, out of retirement and with the team. <laughs> Now my partner in crime and in good things, um, the CEO of the Yonkers YMCA, where we have worked hand in hand on many initiatives to address the ills of our community and particularly focus on uh, our children, and that is Mrs. Sean uh, Patterson Howard. Thank you, Dr. Bostic. Uh, the YMCA of Yonkers is very proud and excited to be a partner with the Nepperhan Community Center, the City of Yonkers, and the Yonkers School District in creating and improving the health of our schools and our communities. As it was stated earlier, this is a two-pronged approach. We have to come at different angles. Our kids spend a lot of time in school, so the health of schools is critical, and then also ensuring that they're returning to a community that supports health uh, is going to make this a success. The YMCA uh, will lead the community efforts. We've been working with the Yonkers Healthy Connections for Life and Healthy Yonkers Initiative, the mayor, and over 80 agencies in Yonkers for a few years, really working on individual health, access to food, and access to physical activity. And now we're excited to be able to take the work deeper and work on changing policies and systems and environments. And what I mean by that is working with our food retailers. We've worked with uh, quite a few of them over the past few years, but now we'll be able to focus more efforts on bringing them together around food procurement so that the small business owners can get better prices for fruits and vegetables, and then we could push those out into the no local neighborhood stores for people to just go downstairs in their building and be able to buy vegetables and fruit to use as part of their meal selections. Then also working with the school district and some of our large agencies and corporations here we have Domino Sugar and MindSpark and, and so many companies to really work on workplace wellness and health and what are we serving in our not only our school cafeterias but our corporate cafeterias throughout the community and then taking it another step further and as uh, Dr. Bostic spoke about earlier and the mayor really working on a complete streets initiative looking at how our streets are, are they walkable, are they bikeable, are they rideable, are they wheelable for our skateboarders and, and our roller skaters. Any way people are getting physical activity, we want to make sure that Yonkers is a gateway for moving, moving on foot, moving on bike, moving on wheels, however you want to move, and then also accessible for those who have different abilities. If the cuts in our sidewalk really work for um, those who are disabled or are using wheelchairs, so we're going to be looking at our streets. When you're looking at policy and system and environmental change, that's going to underpin and really hold up the individual changes that we make. If our stores are healthy, uh, then we're going to be more likely to walk in and, and buy healthy foods. So we're just excited. And thank you, Dr. Bostic. Thank you, all of our community partners, for allowing us to be part of this incredible initiative. And uh, we're excited about Gateway to a Healthy Yonkers. Thank you. As Dr. Bostic said, Cheryl Brennan will be our project director um, for this effort, and she's done an incredible job uh, for over 20 years in ensuring and increasing and promoting health in Yonkers. So we do have a winning team. Look forward to working with you more, Carol. Thank you. Being a former basketball player, I love winning teams. Um, I. Um, we recognize that complete streets is a critical issue and a part of this initiative, and we could not do that, and we could not implement a number of the things we want to do with complete streets without the support and help of city council. So with that being said, we're going to ask um, our city council representative, Councilman Mike Sabatino, would he come up and give remarks, please? Thank you, Dr. Bostic. You know, uh, many of you know that the children are the most important asset we have in our country. And we have to make sure that they are provided with healthy meals and healthy habits. 
Uh, as you know, the city is, is moving forward on many initiatives. Uh, we have the uh, old railroad trailway that we're optimistic about that will soon be available for walking or biking. Um, as the mayor said, uh, we're looking at bike paths. Um, I'm an inline skater, so I'd like to have something for inline skating. Um, uh, so it's very important. These issues are s so critical to the health of our, our <coughs> children and our future. And um, as, as the senator said, you know, at one time smoking was in. Well, you know, we know what the result of that was. We have to have the situation where healthy eating is the in thing to do. And the only way we can do that is by exposing everyone to the foods that are good. I'm not saying every once in a while you can't have a little sweet or a little treat, you know, but we need to be um, more conscious and educating our children and the parents. Uh, as you know, many of our residents come from different cultures. They have uh, different cultural foods. Um, so it, it's an education all the way around. So I want to congratulate everybody on this initiative. Um, for getting this grant, for working together as a team, and I think that's one thing that I have to say, as many of you who live here in Yonkers. There are so many teams that come together. Um, you know, we have the STRIVE program, uh, from cradle to career, all the communities are involved. So this is about what Yonkers is, bringing all our community partners together uh, to reach goals that are beneficial to our citizens. So again, congratulations. Thank you, uh, Councilman Sabatino. And so I want to, before closing, I do want to say a few things. First of all, um, we all know that many years ago there was a court DSEG order that caused us to have to uh, bus our children to school. Um, and for many of us, we thought that that was a wonderful thing. But on the other hand, one of the things that it took away from us was the ability for our children to walk to school every day. And I could remember as a, uh, as a part of that era, um, walking up numerous hills before I got to school every day. Um, I never took a bus to school ever in my whole school career here in the city of Yonkers. But what that did is it caused us to start our day with physical activity. Now when students are bus to school or students have bus passes, that's taken away that ability. So they come out of their house, they get on a bus, they go to school, they go to class, they sit down. And, and for many of our children, that's the most exercise they do in an entire day. So we hope to focus on that area and change that mindset. And so we're so grateful to all of the partners that are gathered here with us this afternoon. But we cannot do this by ourselves. We are going to need merchants in the city of Yonkers, businesses. We're going to need particularly parents to change how we do business as it relates to how you feed your children and even encouraging them to go out and get some physical ex exercise as opposed to being on that house computer or their iPads or iPhones. So with this, we are again grateful to all the partners. We are excited about this initiative. It's going to begin on October the 1st, um, and we are still looking for um, a community coordinator to parallel what Carol Blakeney is doing in, on the school district side. Um, so if there are persons who um, have this level of skill um, and are bilingual and have a good, strong understanding of the city of Yonkers and how it works, uh, we encourage you to reach out to the CEO of the Yonkers YMCA, Sean Patterson Howard. She is taking resumes for that particular position. And on that, we'll take questions if there are any questions at this time. Can someone just talk a bit more about the grocery store changes, when they'll take place, what exactly is going to change? It's progressional. It's a five-year grant, and, each, and over the course of each uh, year, there are what we call uh, four to five smart objectives. And each of those years, we are going to attack a different uh, facet of um, this particular grant. So we are going to begin from year one, reaching out to grocery store owners and um, um, supermarket owners to basically change logistically. For example, if you go in, and I believe uh, Sean can talk a little bit more about that. If you go into the shop right now and you walk into the shop, right, the first thing you're going to see is fruits and vegetables. We all know that when you are hungry 
And when you walk into a store, you literally grab the first thing that you see. So if you see munchies, you're going to grab munchies. If you see fruits or vegetables, you may, you may as well grab that as well. You may also grab that as well. So we want to change how these stores are aligned logistically so that when people walk in, particularly our children where there are delis and grocery stores in the immediate proximity of our public schools, because when they get out of schools, they almost every one of them go to somebody's store. And so we want to make sure that those stores that now have healthy offerings and when they go into those stores, they see some fruits and they see some vegetables. Sean, you want to add something to that? Um, the community partners that are standing here today, we worked with ShopRite a few years ago, and ShopRite expanded and renovated the supermarket. They almost tripled the size of their produce section at ShopRite. They added a new lean meat section. They added. Uh, organic food aisles and gluten-free food aisles. And then we worked with Cherry Valley Farms, which is the old associated, all the way down Riverdale Avenue. And if you go in there, and especially if you love Caribbean fruits and vegetables, it's, it's the first thing you see when you walk into the store. And so we have been working with some small, and now we'll expand it, a lot of your mom and pop stores or your bodegas, um, instead of having chips and, and hostess cakes in front of the store, you'll walk in and you'll be able to see fruits and vegetables because that type of offering is just exciting and much healthier. <laughs>